All right, jumping right into this lentil loaf recipe, and you can see how I made it. I did not show what I had for breakfast because I literally eat the same four things for breakfast that I've featured in videos before. Oatmeal, cereal, eggs and hash browns, or a smoothie bowl. So there's no need to show those. Just starting on how I prepared this lentil loaf. I think that was like three cloves of garlic, something like that. Quarter of an onion. I think half a green pepper. You know, just, I don't even remember if I measure a lot of stuff. You know, I just, I just go with the flow. See how things feel. So I wanted to chop them up really fine. Uh, I don't know how much ketchup that is. Look at that. What is that, a quarter cup? And then I have a half a cup of bread crumbs, it looks like. I remember adding a little bit more after this, so probably like a full cup of bread crumbs, because I did two cups of cooked lentils. Um, there's some black pepper right there. Uh, I think I added a little, a little tops of salt, just a tops, a little bit of salt, and there's some paprika right there. So you mix everything together, and it's supposed to be like ground beef, of course, because we're using lentils as a substitute, and it's supposed to kind of stick, you know, so that it will hold together. So that's why you don't want it to be too mushy. The breadcrumbs are supposed to hold it because we're not using an egg, as you can see. So you just put it in a pan with olive oil at the bottom, and I got honey and ketchup in that bowl for the glaze. Put the glaze on, cover it up, put it in the oven. I think it was for like 45 minutes on 375. So I'm having it with mashed potatoes, and I put coconut milk in there with the potatoes because I don't have any butter. I sure don't. I like soy-free vegan butter, and I didn't have any, I ran out. And I'm not just gonna get regular butter because uh, it has soy. Even though the regular vegan brand has soy. And turn around your products, people. Look at the ingredients. Soy is in everything. Nobody needs that much soy. It's literally everywhere. So I just mushed the coconut milk and everything until it came out smooth. And I actually put garlic in there. Made it garlic mash. And I added some greens. And that's my loaf, my mashed potatoes, and my greens. The loaf is not neat, but that's okay. It's not, it's not beef. It's delicious though. That's the important part. So later on, I made these, uh, well I didn't make them, they're frozen. These vegetable gyozas, and they have carrots, um, cabbage, you see soy sauces in there a little bit. Mm. Uh, but it's an Asian type of frozen cuisine, so you just steam them in this double broiler basket thing. You say you can pan fry them on the back, but I'm not pan frying them. That's too much oil. So I actually topped it with coconut aminos. That's my soy sauce alternative. Told y'all about that soy. And I just put it on there for some flavoring because already it already has some stuff on the inside. And then I, I mixed vegan mayo with sriracha. It's so good I cannot describe how good it is look how happy I am oh my goodness oh it's an experience <laughs> and I did ate that while I watched 90 day fiance <laughs> so still watching 90 day fiance I'm going for some ice cream now I tried to make ice cream a couple of videos ago as you guys may remember I'll link it to jog your memory and it doesn't look cute but this time I got it right I said in the last video I get confidence. This time I made it, put in a loaf pan. It was two cups strawberries, one half a cup coconut milk, and quarter cup agave. Blended it and it came out perfect. It looks like a real sorbet. And I had it with two pieces of chocolate with peanut butter on it. And I finished watching 90 Day Fiance. Yeah, if you guys aren't watching that show, watch it. It's funny. 